Thank you for the introduction. That's what I was looking for right there. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, again, my name is Captain Alex Garichke. Um, I run Local Lines Charters, localliancecharters.com on the internet. anywhere out there I do a little bit of you know a little bit of Facebook sometimes <laughs> and stuff like that um, as he said uh, we were gonna we last time we went over uh, tips and tactics for the mullet run and uh, this last year that we went through hopefully some of you guys went out there and did it that we're here for that one because it was insane this year it was probably one of the best mullet runs we've seen in several years Hopefully, fingers crossed, this fall we'll get another one, another shot at it. Same stuff that we went over then works. I think we podcasted that one also. Yep. So if you want to check it out, go in and check it out and uh, and, and get ready for that. Because we're you know a couple months out still, but as soon as those first cold fronts start pushing down, it's on. And it is really fun. Um, one thing I'm going to go over today uh, is uh, Snapper. Okay? Um, tomorrow, woo, I get the... Uh, the luck of running out and doing red snapper, which we get three weekends this year, which is awesome. Um, I'm doing some other ship trips and stuff like that. Um, what I'm going to focus on, though, is something that anybody can do without hauling a kayak 25 miles out in the middle of the ocean, um, and that's mangrove snapper. Okay, All summer long, the entire lagoon, and especially anywhere that fish can traverse from lagoon out to ocean, Sebastian Inlet area, and especially Port Canaveral for us being kayakers, are uh, you're going to have from uh, roughly, roughly in the you know late May time frame all the way through to the mullet run to the fall when the water start temperature starts dropping off again, you're going to have mangrove snapper, and they are absolutely slap packed full. Port Canaveral is so full right now you will run through 60 baits in a matter of a couple hours. And most of the fish aren't giant by any means, okay? Most of the fish are in that, you know, 10 to 15 inch range. Plenty ones, plenty of them in there for you to get your limit of them if you want to take some home to eat. All right, I'll hit on that real quick, the eating factor. Um, for me, and uh, I've fished our lagoons out there my entire life. I was born and raised in Merritt Island and it's all I've ever done. Um, there's three fish that I take out of the lagoons to eat, all right? Black drum, by far my favorite. You show me a black drum and I'll fillet that thing so fast and have it in the fryer, you won't even know what to do with yourself, okay? Sheep's head, year round, great fish, good to eat. Mangrove snapper, one of the three that I will take out of that lagoon to eat. The redfish, the sea trout, leave them. They're better for fighting, they're better for pictures, better for all that fun stuff. A good redfish isn't that bad to have. You know, every now and then, sea trout, the little guys take so many of them to get enough meat to do anything with, and you hate stroking on 25 inch sea trout to put in the fryer. They're much better as making babies. Um, so, for me, this time of year, I typically switch from my mangrove or from my uh, black drum and my sheep's head to solely mangrove snapper fishing. If I get a client that says, Look, I want to put some meat in the cooler have something nice for us to go eat later on tonight, that's where I go. And pretty much any structure in the lagoons, both mosquito, Indian, and banana, all three, any structure, be it dock pilings, ridge pilings are the biggest ones, mangrove shorelines, all of those areas will hold those fish this time of year, okay? In the rivers, Indian River Lagoon, you'll get some good fish. Mosquito Lagoon, River, or, you know, the Mosquito Lagoon is a little bit smaller typically. Every now and then you'll catch some nice ones in like all over Canal or something like that. Um, for me, the Banana River is where it's at. You got the Port Canaveral right there. Port Canaveral is not an open inlet. It doesn't flow back and forth like Sebastian does, like Ponce Inlet does. It has locks in the back of it. So to get your boat from Banana River to Port Canaveral, you got to sit there and call a dude up and say, hey, man, mind opening locks for me. He opens up one, you go in, and he opens the other one, you go out, and you're in the port, or vice versa, okay? That right there is an alleyway for those fish to come from the ocean into our lagoon in, in the warmer months. So when I start doing this, I focus solely around Port Canaveral and right behind Port Canaveral. 
Now that it's gotten warmer, you can kind of expand that whole little range out to anywhere from in the Barge Canal, all the bridges of the Banana River. 528, 520, Pineda Causeway, Mathers Bridge. There's four of them. All four of them have fish on them. Pineda Causeway has a habit of holding some really nice fish, especially if the water stays clean that way. And that's down in the Satellite Beach area. You know, you're going to be looking for those fish anywhere from right at the first set of pilings off of the shoreline to all the way to where the fenders run down for the middle of the channel. They can be anywhere in that range, okay? One thing the mangrove snapper kind of need is they need that structure, like I was saying. You don't want to go cruising down a flat hoping you're going to catch a mangrove snapper. You'll never see one. You might see one running by while it's headed to another tree, but that's it, okay? You're looking for structure. Rock piles, your your bridge pilings are, are your A number one uh, one your A number one structures. Um, real quick, you can catch mangrove snapper on artificial. You know, it's not the easiest thing in the world. Um, Logan got a good one several years back that was like yeah, it was 20 inches, 21 inches, a nice fish in the Banana River under a dock. Um, we were throwing, trying to get snook out of there with a, uh, it was a catch 2000, the mirror lure, the kind of suspending one, out of the blue, whack, nice, nice mangrove snapper for the river, you know, and yeah, it was very tasty, and um, you will get them with those. Um, if I was going to try to maybe locate my fish, okay, and I didn't want to burn through all my baits on pinfish and other junk that's going to be down there as you're dropping these baits down, and going to be picking at it, I'll throw something like a paddle tail, this is Laring SST. It's got a nice little flopper on it. You know, a little bit heavier of a jig head. You're not throwing it in a foot and a half of water. You're trying to punch down and get to the bottom. Move that thing around the pilings, rip it past it, roll it, roll it slow by the bottom of the pilings or over the rock pile, and you'll feel boom, 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 hits. You're probably not going to hook them with this. You might get one or two, but what you're looking for is boom, boom, boom. Okay, I feel there's something down there. And that will tell me it's a good idea to maybe break out my baits. If you only had a couple three dozen shrimp with you, you'll burn through three dozen shrimp like that. I mean, it is insanely fast. And it'll be on everything from pinfish to, to I mean, toadfish to, you know, sea trout and all kinds of crap. Uh, but, and, and to, to search every little pocket or every little piling that in, a, in, a, in a series in the bridge or or wherever you choose to fish or a, a run of dock pilings, you're going to end up burning through a lot of bait before you actually locate your fish. Something like an artificial will help you find that. And what you're looking for is those good solid thumps. You might hook one, maybe bring up a small one. The small ones tend to be a little dumber for some reason, oddly enough. Um, and, and you know, you might pull up a little eight incher. Well, if there's one down there, I can guarantee you there's 50 of them down there. Um, I spent a lot of time out at Cars Park. Okay? There is the little jetties that come out of the marina, I run my boat through there a bunch, and you know, I'm always out there with the kayaks, me and him, and, and there is little rock piles. And they're not big snappers, they're little guys, you know, little 10-inchers, but there's a hundred of them there. You're not gonna find one snapper sitting by itself on a piling. You're gonna find multiple snappers, okay? So basically, if I'm gonna do anything with an artificial, it's gonna be nothing but searching for fish. Typically, I have enough bait. That's not even in the equation. I'm straight to snapper. I'm straight on the bottom. Okay? I'm going to run over the bait choices real quick. I wanted to try to cast net some, but I was on the water till about 5 o'clock, and then ran straight here, so I didn't even have a chance to. Basically, any fin fish from 5 inches to 3 inches, anything, I don't care what it is, will work on a snapper. Bullet mullet. I call them bullet mullet because they're a pinky mullet. They're about the size of your pinky. Or they look look like a little bullet. You go find yourself a shoreline that's loaded with those and fill a bucket full of them. 60 of them in there. Because you're going to need that many baits. Okay? You have the mud minnows. You know you have the big bull minnows that you see with the blue tail? Well, there's other minnows with them. Those bull minnows will work. I don't like the big giant ones. They're a little bit too big. A lot of times flounder will get to them before the snapper can. But with those, you'll see, this, I call them zebra stripe minnows. Okay, they got little stripes down the sides, they got the fat belly on them, and they roll right next to those bull minnows. They're all over every shoreline. I don't care where you go. 
if you look in six inches of water or less along any shoreline, there is those minnows there. They're about yay big and they have a little profile to them. They're real hardy too. They're hard to kill. They're a great bait. Yeah. The, what did you say? They're called sheep in Yeah. All right. There you go. A sheep gun, but that's what they're called. Yeah, they got little stripes down the side of them. I always call them zebra stripe minnows. They don't look like a zebra either. <laughs> but they are very, very good baits. They're extremely wiggly. Okay? What you want is something that gives off vibration. It gives off some kind of, you know, it gets them fired up. Snapper, it doesn't matter if it's a six inch one or a 45 pound red snapper that you caught out there in 180 foot of water. They want to get charged up. And once they charge themselves up, it, it's like an infection that runs through the whole group of fish. You hook one, you're going to hook more almost immediately because they get amped up and they want something to eat. They're looking for something to eat. It's the same with the big ones. You hook one of the big ones out there, there's usually eight of them following it. Drop baits right next to them, boom, you're on multiple fish right then and there. Okay? Um, shrimp are great. They're really tough to find decent sized shrimp this time of year because it's summer. We don't get good shrimp in the summer. There is one place over in Port Canaveral, I don't know if he's still doing it, but he was bringing in farm-raised shrimp. Those things are crazy. They were like supercharged shrimp, big old suckers too. But for the most part, your shrimp are gonna be small, which is still decent for a mangrove snapper, but they're so small that everything else goes for them and goes nuts over them. A lot of times with the shrimp, what I'll do is I'll buy a pack of frozen shrimp or buy a dozen or two and just leave them in a baggie fresh dead. Bust them in little tiny pieces. If the fish kind of taper off a little bit, stop getting hit, I'll throw chunks of shrimp out there. Give them something to get charged back up on. Put live baits right back down there and boom, get them. I'm a big fan of the fin fish for snappers as opposed to the shrimp. You will catch a ton of snapper on shrimp. Don't get me wrong. If you don't have time or willingness or the care to go throw a cast net and get yourself grimy looking, then go to the store and buy a whole, a whole buttload of shrimp and you'll have a blast with them because they love them guys. All right? Pinfish is one of the best. I'd put finger mullet and then pinfish and then those zebra stripe minnows. Those are the top three choices of your, of your baits for, for hardiness, ease of, of transportation and, and, and care, and also ease of catching. They're typically right in the shallows, up close, especially the smaller pinfish. A pinfish at two inches to three inches is a money bait. You put that down next to a piling, and if there's a snapper there, he's gonna come take a whack at it. I can almost guarantee you, okay? All of those baits, you don't have to have some crazy apparatus to suck the water in and dumping it out and exchanging 20 gallons every five minutes or whatever, like you gotta have for pogies or something like that. You have a five gallon bucket and a bubbler and you're rocking and rolling. And that's one of the best parts with the snapper is that it's, it's an energetic fish, it's a, it's a fast paced type of fishing and it's an easy type of bait fishing. Some types of bait fishing are not easy. Going and getting three dozen mullet to sit on a flat and live, live bait with mullet is not the easiest thing to keep them live, move them around, you gotta have a bucket you're dragging it in the water. The snapper baits are super simple. They're hardy. A little pinfish, a little mullet is as hardy as it gets. The mullet are a little bit more finicky, but those pinfish and those mud minnows are good to go. Um, I'm gonna jump real quick. If anybody has any questions also, please, feel free to ask, take a hand up, go slow down, whatever. Uh, mullet, mullet, pinfish, and then that sheep's head minnow, little mud minnows. It's basically, I call a mud minnow anything that's in that first 10 foot of shoreline. If it swims and it's in that first 10 foot of shoreline, that thing's a mud minnow. And it's going in the net and it's becoming snapper bait. Any, anything, like I said, anything that's under the five, or you know, three to five inch range, you don't want to get too small because then you just get picked apart. And you want to have a good bait. You know, it doesn't hurt to have a couple small ones to kind of get stuff charged up and then put that big bait down or something like that. You know, when you're talking about snapper that range from 10 to 15 inches, that doesn't mean there's not a 19, 20 inch fish down there somewhere. What is the size limit? Uh, size limit, I believe, is 10 inch or better. I don't take them to their 12 inches. I stop at 12 inches with everything. It's uh, same with sheep's head, I think, is either 12 or 10 or something like that. I don't take it till it's 12 inches. Anything smaller, it's not even worth me putting a knife to, so it's not worth me taking. 
Um, 12 inch or better, I usually actually follow more along the lines of 15 inches. The rest of them I just let go. Because I want to have a nice little chunk of filet when I'm done with it. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, and if they haven't changed yet, you're, dead, you're good for five a person. And that's on your boat. So if you have two guys, you don't want to have eight of them on your boat and say, oh, well, there's two guys here. You're in separate boats. When you're in kayaks, you're in completely separate boats, completely separate uh, uh, catch limits and everything like that. It's like with me, when I guide, I actually, people have to have their own fishing license. I have a, I have a fishing license I pay out the rear end for every year on my skiff. Doesn't mean no good on the kayaks. Everybody has to get their own fishing license. Because you're in separate boats, separate, it's separate, uh, you know, separate all the way around. Um, like I said, I like to keep that 14 inch, uh, you know, 13 inch and bigger minimum. Now, when you're fishing the separate kayak, do you go elsewhere 